Welcome back. We will discuss what is happening in DeFi, what's going on. We will explore together why DeFi is a paradigm shift in the financial industry as we know it today. All right, guys, welcome at On DeFi. And today we're going to have a uh, special show with a Bitcoin clap. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about DeFi. So we're going to discuss uh, DeFi on Bitcoin. And I'm sitting here today with Seth from Thailand, Bangkok. I'm sitting here in my uh, office in Thailand, Bangkok. And uh, we're drinking a nice beer. Cheers. Uh, yeah, so welcome to the show. Seth. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for making the time to to join us today and to discuss DeFi on Bitcoin. Uh, we, we will have a open like discussion, like about uh, what is DeFi, why do we need it, uh, the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem, DeFi and Lightning, and some open rounds like questions and random like kind of discussions. Let's see where it goes. Uh, please let me know if you like this kind of content. Uh, if you want to make want me to make more of these kind of contests. My first time I'm making a recording like outdoor in my office here, and I might want to do this more often. Uh, so let me know your comments, but let's start with some intros. So Seth, where you're from, what are you doing? And uh, how did you get into Bitcoin? So I'm just gonna say I'm actually Thai. Like uh, he didn't believe me when I said that in the beginning because like I don't actually look like the most typical Thai guy out there. Neither do I look like the most like typical Bitcoiner out there. So yeah. because like in terms of like we were discussing earlier about like how I'm actually like a software engineer. I've had like many years experience like working with like smart contracts, mm -hmm. working with like maybe different ecosystem out there, mm -hmm. and like how I look at it, it's like well here are things that are basically like useful and here are things that is money. And yeah. that's why, like, uh, when it comes down to, like, I also, like, have, we'll talk about it later on, but I also have, like, a business coming up as well who actually are working directly with, like, DeFi because, like, the way we distinguish ourselves from a lot of DeFi token or DeFi ecosystem out there mm -hmm. is that, like, we don't call ourselves DeFi. Bitcoin okay. is DeFi. Okay. And basically, like, whatever company actually, like, provides, like, service on top of that stuff, yeah. we're more like a DeFi solution. Kind of and like a, basically, a we're, we're talking of 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 the of the channel. You you started as a smart contract, well, a software engineer. Yeah. And then you got into smart contracts, DeFi, DT, other. So I started from the yeah. bottom, like basically, like I was actually like a like a, I was uh, my education is actually in Hong Kong, and I, I was actually like uh, early involved with like the cryptocurrency industry back in 2015. I was actually like a Digibyte like a project like a contributor in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. also like a high uh, member of like the Digibyte holding company as well. And at that time, I was actually like working with like how we actually like make applications of blockchain mm -hmm. actually exist. And that was actually like a very interesting time back then because like basically Digibyte was one of the um, one of the people who actually say they were bit better than Bitcoin because like a lot of the times that, that uh, a lot of the ecosystem back then was actually like we want to be a, a subsidiary to Bitcoin, we want to basically be like a smart contract layer to Bitcoin. Digibyte just came out and said like, hey, we were actually like five times faster than Bitcoin. Did not know at the time like what that actually mean because like I was actually a very green con developer like software engineer at the time. Mm -hmm. And the more I look into it, the more my conviction kind of grew like, hey. That's Bitcoin and that's altcoin. All right. So we have a typical bit Bitcoin maximalist. We, me and Seth, actually, we were in a Telegram channel, DeFi Bitcoin. And DeFi was, Bangkok, which I'm an admin of. Oh, DeFi Bangkok, Everyone yes. who has a pension for punishment to join because in terms of like <laughs> DeFi Bangkok, it is just me, a Bitcoin and shit talking DeFi all the time. Yes. And the reason, the reason kind of he stays is because I have a point. Hmm. I don't agree that, you, well, I mean, everybody has a point and everybody should be able to make a point, but I don't agree with your viewpoints on DeFi. And that's why we have this discussion today. Uh, but before we dive deeper into the, this, into this, uh, the, into this discussion, uh, I mean, in terms of intros, like I'm Amadeo Brandt, I run this channel on DeFi. Uh, I'm a DeFi decentralized finance and self-sovereign fin self-sovereignty maximalist. Yes. I want to live in a world where we will have self-sovereign money. Uh, I see DeFi and crypto as the, the last frontier for our freedom against yeah. digital slavery, which the World Economic Forum and other you know institutions want to uh, want to run. Yes. And uh, I think it's very important for us to create decentralized financial rails 
of which we can do our financial things, right? And that comes into the, the new topic, right? Before we dive into all the maximalist topic, let's start with a more neutral topic. So what is DeFi and why do we need this? I feel like, uh, like what you just said right now, basically, there, there needs to be like a certain like decentralized, uh, decentralized, decentralized finance rail, like basically where people can actually like, um, I would say like the first thing they, they actually have to be able to do is actually run their commerce on top of it and like basically be able to like uh, get financing, get funding, get all the stuff on top of it. To me, that is like a, a problem that's already kind of like solved for, but like one other thing that like has not been solved is like how to actually like make the ecosystem, make the adoption, make it the education on ramp friendly and off ramp friendly mm. because in terms of like- But what is DeFi? What, how do you, how, what's the definition of DeFi? How would you see it? Bitcoin. I mean, just to just to like basically like, uh, put my provocativeness out there, but basically like I don't actually see anything else but Bitcoin as DeFi, and, and that's just because like it's like a proof of work backed financial rail, right? And like mm. in terms of like doing like smart contract, doing all that stuff, like there are things that are can be like subsidiary on top of that that might not be absolutely mm. decentralized, like a peer to peer uh, relay network of like Tor, for example, that like helps with like Bitcoin privacy. That's also like Nostra nowadays. There's also like whole bunch of all these things that like basically uh, subsidiary to like the financial rail of DeFi. Okay. Well, I think that's a very broad sense. For me, decentralized finance is just like a, a term and it, it could be multiple protocols. I mean, Ethereum, of course, is my favorite because I think it will that it will sink to, to that layer. We'll get, go back to that in a bit. But in general, DeFi means decentralized finance and it is a way for humans to basically uh, do their financial interactions that they do in a daily life in a decentralized and um, in a decentralized way non-censorable politically neutral way but i just want to probe on that a little bit but like what is missing um from Bitcoin. No, well, let's let's, let's yeah. stay with let's stay with this term, right? Decentralized finance it needs to be a decentralized financial rails, non-political. It needs to be, uh, you know, non -sen non mm -hmm. These are rails where if I want to send you ten dollars, I should mm -hmm. be able to do that in whatever way possible, right? That's DeFi. Or if I want to do a more complex financial interaction of like, hey, uh, I'm going to give Seth ten dollars if he drinks his beer. Right, for example, and then uh, he drinks his beer, and people see it on the contract. People mm -hmm. can validate that you drink your beer, and then ten dollars will be sent to you. Things like that. So, for example, like when, when we are like doing a live stream right now, right? Like, yeah. do you need like a service that's like Fountain, where like the more you listen to it, the more you can stream Satoshi so directly into my wallet account? For example, yeah. 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 So, like that would be DeFi, right? Basically, like, it's like a podcast, or maybe like a live stream layer that actually like. Directly, the viewers can stream that. Yeah, so decentralized finance should be a way that if I want to overlay a monetary or uh, economic layer on top of something that I do in the world or in in the metaverse or sure. wherever, sure. that I will be able to do that in the most easy way. So or, does does yeah. that exist outside of the internet, for example? So like the internet I, like no, protocol? No. So the internet uh -huh. doesn't have a layer of value layer. So the internet has a very good information layer where we can transfer information to each other. But information, uh, you say that is, uh, I don't think sometimes there's a I don't think they hear it. Yeah, yeah. We have good, good mics. Um, the information layer is different than the monetary layer. Mm -hmm. Like there is no value monetary layer in, in, in crypto, uh, so, or in, in, in the internet right now. Yeah. yeah. We have I mean, that in, and, and I mean, this is why like, I go back to like basically like, why like the internet itself is DeFi, but like it's missing a value transfer layer, which is like basically like a... Uh, no, like, internet itself is not DeFi because internet itself is more like a decentralized... Well, internet itself is the maybe decentralized... The fact that I could like, email someone in China right now or like someone in um, a different country, like maybe like let's say like Africa, like somewhere... I'm probably of like one African country, the, like Cameroon, for example, and like communicate with that person about like a commerce thing that like maybe yeah. I'm asking for like a, a good product for them. Like that communication layer can also be... That's fine to see if I use it. No, uh -huh. I don't agree with that. I, I think if, if there, it only classifies if I wonder is a monetary layer inside your interaction. So if you send emails to each other and then by me sending emails, by me actually clicking then, okay, accept then, 
in a, if it's in a design peer to peer way, then then it could be defined. That's my sure. definition. I, mean, I would say this is why like I go back to like basically. So we're very why. early. We're very early days. So true, I mean, very, decentralized finance. Very true, very it was true. first called open finance when I first got into like crypto Ethereum. I worked with MakerDAO. I worked with Curve. I worked with other DAOs and things like that. It was first called open finance, and now it's DeFi. And maybe it's another term. In a couple of years, I don't know. So well, is the yeah. is the protocol level itself too restrictive to like build stuff on top of it? Because like if you work with like multiple projects, like one that maybe like succeed globally, one that like basically can no longer talk about and stuff like that. Like does that mean that like the optionality of DeFi is also very important to you? Personally? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean it's important to me because I feel that as my mission to uh make people more aware of what money is and what self-sovereignty means and how do we keep control of our own money like we can do with cash how do we do that in a, in a digital way so is it true that like there's nothing to do on bitcoin but to hold it i mean that that goes to the different discussion right but i think yeah but we, we, we now i think we we clearly have a definition of decentralized finance, and I think we agree on it, right? Decentralized finance is when we have monetary interactions, peer to peer, uh, and there's this financial layer on top yeah. of it. So Bitcoin could be classified as DeFi, Ethereum could be classified as DeFi. Sure. Uh, chains, like even, drive chains out there that actually allow people to actually do like um, sure. expressive smart contract. On Solana top of it. can be classified as DeFi. Let's not Apex, go that far. Let's uh, not go that far. All oh, right, right. But anyway, there is there's multiple uh, things in DeFi, and I think what what yeah, and we should be very open-minded in terms of what what it is because it's a new term, it's a new primitive, it's a new thing. I mean, this there's is a lot like, of innovation. Like this is like um, the the one thing that like I I feel like I get into like trouble into like basically why I feel like bad protocols kind of like have like a very short kind of like future because like in terms of like when mm -hmm. you want to do everything on like the one protocol that like she's supposed to supposedly be do one thing perfectly right like mm -hmm. for example like TCP IP protocol like uh, transfer information over it's perfectly right and it hasn't been changed for a long time to me I just feel like Bitcoin that like does one thing right basically like, um, sovereignly like transfer like value between one person to the next person yes perfectly right that to me is DeFi the yeah, and also that I, I should be able to run it mm -hmm. and compute it. I should be able to run a node. I'm good. I, myself. I, I, I will, be able as to... a Bitcoin maximalist, I will always tell you this, like, right? Yeah. Running your own node is important, kid. You should be able to like validate your own transaction, right? Like, yeah. like, like No, I said. agree. I fully agree. Like, I mean, you should be able to have the option. You can have like account abstractions. You can, can have different layers on top of it, but me as a user of a decentralized finance network, I should be always be able to go back to the core. If I use a uh, MetaMask or whatever, I should be able to run my own RPC node, or I should be able to Correct. basically run my own node and calculate back uh, all to all the different transactions and Correct. to all the different state changes. Not that everybody will do that. No, but you no, should no have one does option. that. Like, let's be clear though, I no know. one does that though, I know. because like everyone but, like relies on Infira, everyone relies on Anchor, everyone relies on like all this stuff. No, 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 that's irrelevant because you just said it wasn't. It's no, but you always should be able to do it. Yes, and that's okay. the thing about a decentralized finance network that we should be able to do these things. The same should with someone be able to do it better than you do that they are available to extract as much of like from your transaction more than you do. You're, Diverging from the main question, but I mean, DeFi is a decentralized finance like solution. It can be put on any like technology stack, and it should be able to uh, be constructed from 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 its core by everybody. Uh, well, of course, there's technical knowledge gaps, etc. But that's a different like political and knowledge so, discussion. But on that's on the, on the base definition discussion. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so that's DeFi. Yeah, and maybe just get back to my question. Like, basically, yeah. like, is it true that like you can't do anything with Bitcoin more than just holding it? So, I mean, good question. Like, like in my opinion, like I had Bitcoin. I actually lost some of my Bitcoin on, on FTX. Me too. Well, wait, wait, you actually lost it on FTX. Yeah. But no, it's just lost in a boating accident because, like, again, Bitcoin maximalist. But like, I, I just want, like, like. I want to get like certain things out of the way because like otherwise like I won't be representing like all the plebs out there correctly. I just feel like 
every single thing that like a human person, like a person do, does, is an economic action. For example, like the fact that like I show up here today to drink beer with you instead of like working like two jobs and like working three jobs at home is because like just holding something, like having the the undebatable money, mm. is actually something like I'm using it right now. Like basically, I'm using Bitcoin right now because I'm actually like holding. Non-debatable money, mm. like that's actually like something like I feel like just getting that out there, right? Like basically, mm. like, I don't have to like worry that like some tokens I'm holding out at home right now is being minted more by my like whoever I trust, for example, because like all the node runners around the world is actually like making sure, literally, all the node runners around the world is making sure like my money does not get debased. Is that DeFi? I disagree with some statements there because I don't think the node runners are doing that. It's just like the the, the Bitcoin network makes like sure that your state in the blockchain kind of stays that one Bitcoin or ten Bitcoin, whatever you have, stays like is yeah. is there because you have a but distributed it's, uh, but ledger. It's, but it's an economic action, right? Like basically, just holding something, I'm doing something with it. Like I just. I I heard this many times from like basic people who are just mm. like, well, it's really sure, better but because DeFi. you can do so much more with it. I was like, no, look, but I'm doing something perfectly with it. Like I'm doing something that is cannot be outdone by something else, like any other like monetary real in the world with it. I'm doing something by holding it, and like I know in mm. my mind that like this is the one network that will not be debased, and that okay. that affects all of my other economic action. I mean, you can also hold the gold or something. Sure, like, yeah. sure. Same thing. Sure, but like gold is easily debasable. Gold is like mostly traded on paper, and gold is you know like heavily manipulated by like JP Morgan. Can I say that? Can I say that? I say that, right? What? Gold market is heavily oh. manipulated by JP yeah. Morgan. I mean, everybody knows that, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. so like this is like the one thing that like I feel like uh, in terms of like non rehypothecated like uh, asset, digital asset in the world. The thing that is like you know gonna outlive me, not just like you know the gold market. Like yeah. these are the things that like I'm just by holding it. Yeah. I'm participating in DeFi. I mean, again, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could make a case for that theoretically, and I would say theoretically, you're right. But theoretically, then I would say like from a capital efficiency standpoint, like what, like I mean. Mm, then the, 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 yeah, then we get into the long-term security model and all that stuff. I don't want maybe, to get into maybe, that right now, maybe, maybe. but like maybe later, but like, it's just like Bitcoin, 21 million, that's it. You buy one asset, you know that it's only, it's not going to be more than 21 million and that's it, right? Not to say that you can't do more with it, by the way. I'm just saying, just holding it, I'm doing more with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You could, you could do that. Uh, I think. You, yeah, you could say the same about a lot of other different things, but just holding a, a stock that people say it's not going to be more or something, because it's still all theoretically, like there's theoretically not going to be more Bitcoin, but there could be a, a point in time where they say like, ah, we do, we're going to print a little bit more Bitcoin because, I mean, Terrence I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it will ever happen. But it could theoretically happen. Um, sure. Yeah, so that's a different discussion I, I think that's a, it's a um, i think like i can with definitely prove why a, that won't happen uh, because like basically the note funding network is it like like you just said right now like there's a mesh of like bitcoin out there but again what's the point like and everybody okay holds to keep one the bitcoin, rules as yeah, one as bitcoin possible. and then there needs to be a lot of like there needs to be some infrastructure built around it right like if i would talk with you one year ago you would maybe say oh just put your money in blockfi or in uh, ftx or whatever and we we have seen or celsius I've seen so, that doesn't work. Going back to like what I actually do for a little bit, like I actually like work for a hedge fund here in Thailand. And basically, like we actually have like a huge hole with BlockFi, basically. Oh, sorry, FTX. Um, basically, like we actually like did like a um, one billion like trading volume on FTX back like, in 2021. Yeah. And both of us have lost. Well, why would you not just hold Bitcoin then? Why why would you why would you educate your fund to the education? Like basically I hold my own Bitcoin. Yeah, but why? Which I've lost all of it. Of course. Of course. But why 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 did the fund go to FTX or BlockFi or whatever they, they use? Um basically there is there is a crypto market out there that is actually something that is appealing to the non-educated. To the hedge funds. No, to the non-educated. 
retail members, like uh, high-net-worth individuals who actually like, well, we've heard about Bitcoin 14 years ago, but like we heard that the new thing, the new and exciting thing was Solana, for example, and they want to get exposure to something that one-to-one correlate to Bitcoin. And like the one thing that like, we say a thousand times, right? but like basically like in terms of like, this is the old, only financial advice I would give to people is that like you cannot hedge with counterfeit. Like that's one digital asset. Yeah. And that is like all this like tiny validated network that asset that actually like you can actually like, go and like invest in. Mm. Um again, not financial advice. Um mm. but like in terms of like digital asset with an immaculate perception, with like a fair launch, with like every single thing that is like done right about it, that's Bitcoin. Okay. So like, but why would they go to FTX? Why would your fund go to FTX? Why don't they just hold their Bitcoin if that's, you know, Well, like? in, a, in the Bitcoin community, we, we say two things, right? Like, you can either mine with ASIC or you can mine from weak hands. And I mine really well from weak hands. On FTX? On FTX. Not anymore. And other exchanges, which we're not going to say anything about them no, yet because, no, like, no, we no, actually no. have a good relationship with them. FTX. No, like FTX, we have a ten million dollar hole with them, but like that's not like a majority of. But the thing is, it would be beautiful if there would be, for example, something called an automated market maker. Yes, which we will make advantage. uh, We will take advantage of it on the Lightning Network. Yeah, so uh, we're going into these cycles, which always happens when I talk to Bitcoin maximalists, like about like yeah, about very theoretical questions about what things are and what not. I like to see practical things. I want to see things work. For example, Lightning Network for me doesn't work. Okay. Like you can do microtransactions, that's fine, okay. It's a solution for something, but I think it's more of a problem looking for a solution. It's, I don't think it will work at scale. Sure. Um, and I also don't think DeFi or Bitcoin will work. And I think I, I, the proof is in the pudding, right? Like on, we have a thriving and living DeFi ecosystem on Ethereum right now. Right. This is, um, is uh, December 2022. Uh, yes. And I would say that like thriving and living ecosystem for DeFi is heavily exaggerated. I don't agree with that. I mean, I'm part of the thriving and living DeFi ecosystem mm-hmm. right now and I'm working in it on a daily basis. So we have an ecosystem, we have fees, we have, um, you know, like go to token terminal and there you can see that Bitcoin is only, it's just in the top 10, but a lot of other DeFi pro- protocols on top of Ethereum or on some other chains are making much more revenue with the service that they offer than the Bitcoin base layer that offers the peer-to-peer money. Revenue service. in what term? Hmm? Revenue in what term? Revenue in the terms of fee revenues from uh, the network. Fee that is... Uh, fees. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, AMI I, fees, I, network fees. I, I, I'm I gonna link. I'm gonna link this in the in the description below, uh, or we can we can also look at it. You know, like uh, if if we go to token uh, terminal, you will be able to see that basically um, Ethereum price 1.2k and Bitcoin is 16k right now. Mm-hmm. And you can see the, 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 the you see price to uh, earnings ratios, etc. So there's a website called Token Terminal, and here you can actually see all the data, right? Bitcoin is 16.6k and has a fee of 9.3 million the last 30 days. Ethereum has a fee of 71 million in the last 30 days. Mm-hmm. And above, above uh, Bitcoin, for example, is GMX, which is a uh, derivatives protocol on top of a layer 2 Arbitrum on Ethereum, yeah, 9.5 million. Uh, uh, Convex, which I'm a big user of, 10.2 million. Uh, Uniswap, Lido, OpenSea, Which of, the, et cetera, which of et those like, uh, ecosystem is actually like a proof of like, network? Because like, the reason I Different ask, discussion, right? different discussion. No, no, the reason I We're ask, talking about here about a living and thriving ecosystem. The, the reason I ask, and because on, like, I want to make sure... We have it. I, I want to make sure that like we actually are, are talking about the same thing. For example, like when you actually say like Ethereum it has like a fee of this much, is it like a self-referential fee of like where like a proof of uh, stake network actually like create more money of itself and price itself with the market traded price of like basically not the whole that entire Ethereum system. No. So like basically like with a Bitcoin, the same way that Bitcoin generates fees. With a Bitcoin proof of work network, basically like there's actually like a mining 
yeah. a mining pool where they actually have to like expend real world energy to actually like make the Bitcoin itself. And like that yes. price that actually gets made is the price that actually gets made by real world backing value of like energy. But the fees, to which the, like, the I, transaction I keep, fees that I, are generated keep, in I, the Bitcoin network are I, exactly the same way as Ethereum generates fees. Sure, but There's like no I'm, difference. I'm, I'm trying to go back to like basically like what are the fees, like what are the, the real world like uh, tethered like uh, value of like each of those networks because like in terms of like... Let's go to GMX, like for example. GMX we generates 10.3 million We are million committing dollars. the same mistake that like Sam did for his FTT token, which is like basically he has this like costless no. minting of fees no. No. that is like just like not backed by anything. So which like, no, like the nine that is not, ecosystem that is on not top the fee, of like... The fees that are generated on GMX or on OpenSea or on Uniswap Arbitrary because like none of those like fees are being like uh competed for in making in terms of like this is why like I keep going back to like basically what actually is DeFi. They are like you actually have like let's go to Uniswap or fees. Curve, right? So uh, in Uniswap you have liquidity pools and people Self put their tokens. Liquidity pool, yes. They put their tokens, two tokens, and people trade the tokens, and then there's a 0.3% fee on the Uniswap pool. Yes, a self-referential like uh, self-referential fees that like but people in- pay that fee by using the service of exchange to so, so, so. And, 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 fee and, and, and do you know, do you know, do you know what do we call thing. that in the hedge fund what we call that book fee because like in terms of like book fees are like hey here is a off book uh, liquidity network that actually just like follows the price of like whatever like focus being traded this is why like if you go on any amm liquidity network on like uh, ethereum gmx or whatever it follows very closely to the Binance fucking like uh, trading uh, uh, trading price. So which like I'm just like trying to like, understand here that like yeah because the people are arbitraging it. Yeah, because like no one, like because of an economic literally to is it, it is a book fee trading network no. which like I I personally like have like program like sure like, you uh, can DeFi say that but then like, you're these, like, saying that we're the, the thing the definition of DeFi is book fee DeFi is book fee. Like, like financial DeFi as it is today is book B. It's like it's not the real. I don't price understand discovery. what book B means, but it's not like, the real price discovery. It is a lagging price discovery network for whatever the real price discovery like uh, trading. No, for I example, think, I don't agree. You can, have, price, you can have you can have a token that only trades on Uniswap or Curve. Sure. Uh, and that's and they are barely traded. For American stock, for example, like book A is NYSE and book B is NASDAQ. Like, it's just clear. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, and NASDAQ and, 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 and whatever, they make money by offering a service. But going back to like your case earlier, like how yeah. Bitcoin does not generate fees. For well, Bitcoin does generate fees, but it's just very small. $9.3 million the last 30 days. Cool. Compared to Ethereum that did it almost 10x more. Bitcoin fees. generates fees for work and like, Bitcoin generates other, other fees for that transaction, I actually, transactions. Like if yeah. I do a Bitcoin transaction, I spend a little bit of money and that goes to the mine that includes my transaction. Bitcoin well. generates fees for work expended by energy outside of the network. Other network that I actually see that I basically, like, we, we have a many discussion between TBL many, many times. Yeah. The reason like I, I as like someone who was actually like a uh, many years in software engineering and like basically like, I try to understand many times like what the fuck you were talking about like, in terms of economics. Like if you have a self-referential fee that like is set by the network, it's the people who set the fees that actually are the monopoly of the oligarchy, oligarchy of the network. So that's why like for me- No, but that's not true. Like the fees, for example, in Curve are set by a DAO. Okay. There is not one person that Self-referential sets Self-referential fee. That's what I meant. Basically there is now no work outside the network be expended on top of it. Mm. Bitcoin is the only non-rough self-referential okay, so monetary I'm, like rail. I'm, I'm linking token rails. terminal below, and there you can see all the data. And you can argue about the data, but yeah. I think the data—I mean, the data can be cleaned up, etc. But in general, Bitcoin generated around 9.3 million dollars in fees, sure. where GMX, Uniswap, Ethereum, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, generate more fees for a service that they provide mm-hmm. to the public mm-hmm. than Bitcoin. That's a fact. Sure, sure, sure. this is a fact. But okay. Let's 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 uh, go to the DeFi ecosystem on on, on Bitcoin. I, w- I would love to learn more about it. And uh, yeah, please uh, let's let's dive into that. What 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 right now is considered as a DeFi on Bitcoin? What 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 can Bitcoin we... is DeFi. Like okay, mm. like I I don't want to like basically like try to like yeah, that's fine. sound too much like a 
broken record. Broken record here because like in terms of like what what actually like, that means that because like because sure. the actual asset itself cannot be debased easily mm-hmm. without like work expenditure like that is outside the network itself. Like that is actually like why like the um, sure. So production. Bitcoin generates nine point three million dollars in fees. Nine point three million dollars in it's fees. It's a top ten DeFi protocol. It's sure. it's uh, it's yeah. Okay, I would agree with that. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Nine. How much again? In, 9. 3, like in the last six, thirty days, nine point three million. At uh, one quarter of its peak price, it, it generates like a nine point three million million dollars in fees. Um, but in terms of like what uh, what a Bitcoiner with a broken record like mindset would actually say is actually like a Bitcoin is actually like a mm-hmm. Um, uh, energy protected like uh, what do you have? Uh, sorry, energy protected distributed ledger. Basically, that means that like every single like fees that actually is being generated nowadays is actually also like protecting the past uh, behavior of Bitcoin as well. Basically, there is like yes, no such that's thing what as like blockchain does. There, there is like no such thing as like a reorganization of like Bitcoin like by like a, a tiny few. Like yes. like like for example, like the DAO hack for example is like a reorganization of like the like the blockchain. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I say that? I mean, like, sure. okay, sure. Yeah. The, the DAO hack and like auto, like basically, like we yeah. that are like basically like, voted on by the few, like uh, of right. like the people who actually. Like, oh, of course, I have to say right. it, right? Okay. Well, like, but this is why, like, I, I keep going back to like Bitcoin is being protected by energy and like not just energy expended today, but like energy that has been past expended as well. So like, in general, like um, oh. looking at like the expenditure or like looking at the fees in the rate, like we actually like, not looking at the same thing at all because like nowadays, like we actually have to like talk about like. The market price of like the ten percent traded Bitcoin on centralized exchange to basically like say, hey, this is the uh, monetary value of the whole network. I'm just like, as someone who works very closely with trading strategy at a hedge fund, that is not the correct pricing uh, mechanism. If people want to use a simple dashboard on the internet to price Bitcoin, I feel like you are making a very grave mistake. Now, that's just me saying it. Now, in terms of like what DeFi ecosystem on Bitcoin is, which is basically uncapturing mm-hmm. the dashboard pricing of like Bitcoin price like into the, into the US dollar, right? Like, how do we do that? Can, can, I, can I just say that? Like, basically, yes. so... Taking back to like basically like how Bitcoin actually like fits with the internet by basically like the value transfer layer of the internet, Bitcoin just fits, right? Like Bitcoin is not trying to replace the internet. Bitcoin just like has like other like tools like peer to peer trading, uh, market make uh, market matching like a website for like you who actually like trade Bitcoin in person. Mm. Peer to peer or like DeFi has actually always been a Bitcoin territory kind of like question anyway. Mm. Now, can we do that but scale it up to because like Because you whole... see Ethereum as a test network for Bitcoin, right? So everything that's good on Ethereum will sink back to Bitcoin. Can can we scale that for the next like six billion? Like let's not say six billion. Can we scale that for the next one billion like Bitcoin users in the world? Like it turns out like you can actually do that like al- already on like the, the the Lightning Network and like this is actually like where maybe I can just like mm-hmm. do my pitch right now and like basically like sure. Um, in terms of like automated market making like a uh, liquidity pool on the Lightning Network, it's already it already can be done. Uh, it's not a proof of concept. It can actually be done by like basically like, multiple players out there right now. For example, Alvin Markets, both of the exchange and Collider or XYZ. Sure. Like these are things that actually. You have a working product. We have a prototype because. A solid we, prototype. But we I, I, do yeah, not also want to talk about the prototype just yet. Oh. Because like the prototype itself, actually, like we are yeah. something that is a DeFi solution. We're not DeFi. Bitcoin is DeFi. Uh, in terms of mm-hmm. what the product actually does, is so, like we actually have a semi custodial wallet where people can actually forget about the on-ramp and off-ramp question. And like they can actually, if they were today going to short Bitcoin, this is like the the, the kind of like mentality that we have to like kind of adopt here. And like as a Bitcoiner, I short Bitcoin every single day by holding Thai baht, <laughs> by holding US dollar, <laughs> by holding like some dollar. shitcoin token that I have to like use for my testnet and, uh, and all that stuff. <laughs> that actually in a sense, like in, in every financial term, that is shorting Bitcoin. Like, should you not be able to short Bitcoin on the Lightning Network? And that's what they actually do, because like the Lightning Network itself is actually like, the most like carbon neutral, mm-hmm. privacy friendly and easy to adopt like financial okay. rates in the world right now. Okay. That's what that. we actually do. And that's great, but 
I've been talking about Lightning and I'm also a recovering Bitcoin maximalist. I actually was a Bitcoin maximalist in the past. And I always want to see big things block that someone's so like not yes, that much. I'm a big block. Like, let's not get into that too much. But I was a Bitcoin maximalist by adopting a lot of Bitcoin adoption in Amsterdam, where I did a lot of like wallet adoption. I, yeah, but then I, yeah, that's a discussion maybe for another time. But I want to see the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, MakerDAO works. Uh, Does it? Ave works. That, that, that's making it work. Works. Ave, Ave works. has. Okay. Sorry. Make a DAO doesn't work because like the majority of, like the actual like um, colorized asset is nowadays actually uh, USL. Uh, that's USL a detail. It's, it it's is a huge systemic risk from a technical it perspective. It is a it's huge it's a systemic risk. You're talking like, about a thing, AMM lining, which is great. No, I would love no, to it see just, it. Make it out doesn't work because like nowadays like it has like Make huge systemic works. risk of like basically their number one competitor. That's a different discussion. Their number one competitor making Make it out price. It is, it, but it doesn't work. You can't it just say it works. It works. It doesn't work. It works from a technical perspective. As a token that like has its price up in the air and is definitely not stable because like it has the, the hugest systemic Frax risk. Works. Frax what works. Works. Okay, going works. going to the next thing. What what's the next thing you were just talking about just now? Uniswap. Uniswap. Okay, oh, yeah. Uniswap works. And like I said before, Book B is Book B, and I hope that like. I always I, I look, swap Bookby. Like I, I, I think it's curved look, Bookby as well. Then I look at the market, right? Like let's just let's just be clear here. No, sure. Like, That's but it work. Okay, work doesn't work. But but you can use you can you can do I, a cryptographic I, option. I wanna, you can take self self sovereign money. I want to. You can then that. interact with it in a decentralized peer to peer way with technical tools. You can use it. Lightning, okay, I can run a lightning hole, but can I use a lightning AMM right now? No. I want to take a step back. I want to okay. take a step back here because like I look at the market, I look at the free market as an allocation tool mm. of like, hey, how do we get financing to the productive class, right? Sure. Who the fuck does Uniswap have? Like, does it allocate money to the productive class or does it just like have like pumps and dump? Because in terms of like the numbers yeah, by the discussion. numbers. By the numbers, it's 97 was 97. How is lightning gonna? How is it lightning aim? I know. Than a Uniswap Let's be clear. Let's be clear. We're not talking about what about is it right now. We're talking about yeah. like Uniswap. Does Uniswap work? Yes. Does Uniswap allocate money? Uniswap is DeFi. Allocate and it works. finance. No, but that's not the definition of from DeFi. the investors. We started very clear with the definition. The no, 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 no. Class. That's not the definition of DeFi. Okay. So we started with it. We started with it. No, no, we started with DeFi. With, we started with the definition of DeFi. Ninety-seven no, 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 no. is DeFi. Is what, 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 is the, what is the definition of DeFi? I just did it. Like a free, no, it's not. A we token agree. and free to of like allocating like financing no. to the productive class. No, you're right? changing the definition now. Okay, what do we? We, we recorded. We have. We started with the sure. definition of DeFi. Sure. It is an open financial system, peer-to-peer -peer network where everybody can use that technical is tools. Outrun by ninety-seven percent. Ninety-seven percent scam. Hacking it doesn't matter. Numbers, by the way. I agree with that, but it doesn't. It's it's nonsensical point because it doesn't matter of the definition. Sure. I if mean, I like, want to use DeFi, on a, on Ethereum or a layer two, whatever, I can use it. If I want to use DeFi on Bitcoin, so here's this one too that it. like I now know for a fact that like to avoid it because it works for the 97% scam and for the 3% scam that now has to like fight for financing allocation with the 97% scam. So you're calling for regulations? You want to no, no, no. I'm not talking about the regulation. I'm oh. talking about allocation tools of like financing to the productive that's not class. the definition of DeFi. Fi what the fuck is financing? I thought we were talking about financing. We're talking about DeFi. Is DeFi not financing? DeFi could be financing in a peer to peer way. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what does financing do? What does financing solve for? Uh, Bitcoin solve for neutral money. Undebasable. Yes, and Ethereum. Politically neutral. Ethereum too. Maybe. What does financing solve for? What does finance mean? I'm not a financial expert. I'm a, I'm a software engineer and I a have expert. I have a clear message of you dissing me about like not knowing what finance is. That's true. That no, is okay, that's true. true. I, I just, no, I mean, if need, DeFi okay. works because it can be approved DeFi on the Ethereum network, it doesn't work. It doesn't even work. exist. Yeah, but decentralized finance, as of its definition, works on Ethereum today. The 
adjective does defy not, as a definition doesn't work on Bitcoin. Doesn't. The adjective does not change the second word. Finance still has to work. What is financing being done on Ethereum or whatever ecosystem you want to talk about? I mean, there, there, there so is the financial ninety-seven percent scam according to Peking University numbers. I I'm would not say asking that, for I would say ninety-seven percent scam. Then it's already better than fiat. Fiat is ninety-nine percent. Let's be very clear here, right? Like basically. Um, in terms of like free market, I'm also a very free market maximalist as well. And I feel like free market maximalists actually get the financing needed by the productive class to actually happen. And we can actually see in many, many clear historical records that actually exist. But in terms of like market manipulated tourist money jumping into like crypto boom, UST, sure. Luna, we're bubble, going, bubble and whatnot. We're going into a direction that I was already afraid of. And this is always happening with Maximus. This is not an attack, this is just a comment. I, it's I, always I, going I'm in a theoretical thing. I'm attacking your If I now go on. to token terminal, that which we just do, does not work. you can see the fees. Make a DAO does, make a DAO does not work. Make a DAO from a tech... I'm just looking from a software and technical perspective. It works. You can have a asset and another asset, borrow against it, have a vault. That's like, you that's can, like me telling you that like, if I want a Bitcoin note by myself, it works. I'm just like saying, like, if it's a financial yes. rail, it has to work Bitcoin more than peer like, to peer money. Works. More than zero and one, right? But as a financial... Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Like, Do we yeah, agree that like, if it's a, if it is a software that is supposed to be distributed between multiple people, mm. like just running the zeros and ones, like, you know, like unit testing, that doesn't they know that that thing works. Like if I send you an email of like a cat JPEG and it comes out as a dog JPEG, it doesn't work. No, I agree. So like finance is allocation of financing to the productive class. DeFi doesn't work. Then finance doesn't work. Finance doesn't work. No, finance like in our today's world, finance doesn't work. If the definition of a Finance is why, why, why? allocating into the productive class. Sure, sure. Why, why do they finance today doesn't work? Because I'm I'm looking at it. I'm looking I at it, and I'm just a filthy, just a filthy, mindless Bitcoin maximalist here. Finance. Why do you think finance doesn't work? I mean, the current financial system is, in my opinion, broken. Okay. And I would like to see a financial system oh, where it's more. Is it broken? I think what's broken in our current financial system is basically. Um, is there, I think money in itself is a good thing, and I think like the financial system in itself, like for like 56 years ago, I is that a field, and it works. Is but fractional field, reserve banking doesn't allocate finance to the productive class. It allocates is there money a to the richest class. Minority, keeps, yeah. of, is there for you a minority of the, the current financial system that is allowed to fail over and over again because it doesn't matter to them because they're close to money printing? Yeah. So that's DeFi. No. Literally, if you are a Ethereum staker, you can fail over and over again because you still have like the disposable income to actually like, try out. For example, like let's say Uniswap works, but like it doesn't attract the future of like future liquidity. The people who are majority like staking Ethereum today can clone Uniswap yeah. and like fail over and over again to sure. use the But it's not sensible because okay. I just want to have my, my, I have, I don't know if people know, but I have, I have a chip here in my hands that I, I don't use anymore. You do not have any Bitcoin. He has zero Bitcoin. Do not come after him. No, I have zero Bitcoin. Yeah. So I have a chip here and I, I kind of want to use a application where I can have my digital like representation of value, which is Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever. And I want to put that maybe in an AMM and exchange that for another token of value. Of or I want to maybe put it in a uh, smart contract and so, program that money. I want to program the money to like, hey, I'm going to put like... This is where uh, one every single time I talk to contract. Ethereum maximalist, I end up as a customer support because like, he's like, how do I do this on Bitcoin? It's like, first of all, I'm not customer support for Bitcoin. I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, right? So like, I don't want to be like, hey, no, by no, the way, I have, There's multiple ways to do it on Bitcoin, but I think they're all inefficient. Sure. And, and, and I think on Ethereum, you can right? do it in a, in a more efficient and capital efficient way. Capital right? efficiency, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's and I think really... Ethereum as a base layer is a much better base layer than Bitcoin. I literally just showed you a pitch deck of like why Lightning Finance actually like works not two times, not three times. Products. It is a thousand products. times more efficient than like 
a one token swap on like Ethereum, yeah. which cost today on December 2022, $1.36 to because swap. Because you have more security. I don't trust Lightning. I want to run my own Lightning node. If you open a Lightning channel, that's also expensive. Sure. If I want to do How uh, is a one... Lightning... Uh, running has uh, running lightning like basically like, if you actually like, go by the latest number it has like a lifetime cost of like two hundred fifty dollars lifetime cost. Yeah, but I want to go back. To, I want to do a swap for a different token and just go back to layer one. That's the difference, right? That I think easy. that a you call decentralized that a finance stock. monetary system should always sink back to a base layer. You call that can do stock, everything which has that you a, can also do, which has no. Uh, Smart contract exploit. For example, like Arbitrum what One recently, like smart Arbitrum One, for example, which is supposedly the one of the most efficient, optimistic role of like Ethereum, has a smart contract still exploit. Met. It's still met. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm so, Arbitrum so One has a lot of risks. So, like technology, one technology can be in beta forever, and one technology cannot be. I'm not, I would be a directly admitting I'm, that, that there is a lot of layer two is on, on, on. I'm extremely concerned at the there moment. There is a lot right? of things that are under admitted that are sold I'm out on Ethereum, but you can actually use it. I'm extremely concerned. Like with Lightning, yeah, I can open a Lightning channel. Yeah, I can do that. Super difficult, super complex. And I want to use this AMM on Lightning, but I never saw it. I, I never I'm used it. I would love to see it. I'm extremely and concerned. And I will be the first user. I would, buy my, I would buy back my Bitcoin that I don't have right I'm now. I'm extremely concerned. That, for example, like when you are comparing, like the, I feel like Chuck Dixon causes like skeuomorphism. Mm. Do you know what skeuomorphism is? No. So basically, like you are working off of like traditional finance model nowadays, like where you have government issued credit, mm. which they want to call it money, but it's government issued credit. That like basically like, you can use that government issued credit to actually like invest into like, the stock market in terms of like uh, real estate, in terms of whatever it is. So like there is a need to exchange that government issued asset into a different, perhaps more long-term running asset out there that is called finance or like whatever you call investment is. Mm. I'm extremely concerned that like, is that the only form of finance we've ever seen in human history? Because like when we're talking about, let's call it Ethereum, blockchain, right? No, we're about I think blockchain, I, we're talking about barrel asset, right? The relationship, and then we talked about this, well, I, I, in my opinion, the relationship to money is going to change. The, the relationship that people have so with why, money is going to change. So why and we're going to see them more as monetary energy. And we need, to, we need to have a way to very quickly, peer-to-peer, -peer, transfer value to each other. If the in a peer-to-peer, non-political, non-sensible way, send, send value to each other in a programmable way. If the relationship... And that is what I... That is what I personally want, and that's what I think the world needs to, if the, to if the evolve, if the to, evolve to the next changes. level. And I think it's inevitable that we're going to move there. If that's the relationship opinion. for money changes, right? Because like basically the relationship for money for us is like we're working on a better asset thing now, and it has to evolve in the future. Can we leave traditional finance behind and like say the urgency to exchange my asset into like something else is no. more important than actually using it in commerce? It's an evolution. No, it's definitely moving backward. Like literally, like that's what the stock market is. Like, like I, I, we were talking earlier about like how most people have their first introduction to cryptocurrency with a candlestick shot. Yeah, that's horrible. And I feel like that's a well, that's backwards. also to be honest, that's also my was but, also but that's my a backward. No, it's not my introduction to Bitcoin was mining. I, I was interested in mining. So in, in order to evolve, like we, we're talking about like basically we want to like do uh, expensive smart contract, right? Like mm. that Ethereum does very well. Can I say that? Thank you. Ethereum is one of the boss, one of the mess. <sighs> Cheers. Ethereum is one of the best peer-to-peer -peer mixer in the world oh, for God. centrally issued assets. For example. Oh my God. Centrally issued. Start with a compliment, and with an insult. Okay. It is. <laughs> no, but like it is. Like, I feel like this is why like the evolution of like future like layers and assets and whatnot. Like, we will need Ethereum. Like, I I never said Ethereum was gonna like go in the way path because like I feel like that's something like people don't actually understand. Like that's Ethereum. Good. Then you're not I'm a bit maximum. I'm gonna say it now. Then you're, Bitcoin, like, you're a Bitcoin. Then you're a Bitcoin moderate. A Bitcoin test net. Oh my God! I just said. But here's the thing. Yeah, uh, you're a Bitcoin moderate. One of my favorite things that came out from Ethereum is uh, Viper Lang. For example, like a really hey! good programming language. Charles. I know the, the main maintainer. Shout out to Charles. Hello. Yeah. yeah. And we both agree how bullshit like JavaScript actually is. Yeah. Like making a making a 
smart contract language based off JavaScript is like yeah. not the smartest thing. Well, Bitcoin script is not that much better. But okay. It is leaks better. All right, that's a different discussion. But, but okay. But uh, I feel like uh, in DeFi terms of, on Bitcoin. When will be able? When will we be able to use it? When can I? Um, create when I can get a mortgage or when I can I do like financial things or when can I do you know uh, an AMM on, on, on Bitcoin or things like that. Uh, you can already AMM on Bitcoin today that are uh, like few uh, providers out there already and like I said it is a business on top of like DeFi. Bitcoin is DeFi. It is a business where like you actually do have to like have an AMM that is like optionally updated like on the lightning, ma uh, lightning markets for example. Like these things already exist, and like they have a much, much lower risk profile than if like you are a DJ and like reading the like, newspaper every single day about like whether or not like, tether is gonna be like regulated as like, a commodity or not. Like this is something that like I feel like, like systemic risk speaking, like having a AMM on the Lightning Network just answers directly to what actually is DeFi. Because any so lightning, get a lot of shit going, because like any lightning node, oh, if we'll see about like Caro, because like Caro actually is like, it's interesting because like we were talking earlier about like how state chain needs a global state. Caro doesn't need a global state apparently. Yeah. Um, we'll but see. Don't you think that like, I mean, DeFi is moving very fast, and it's actually quite zero knowledge proofs like. We get now layer two, side How is DeFi all these things. Very fast. DeFi is DeFi like is the repeat of the AMM made by Uniswap five years ago over and over again. We're singularity moment in DeFi. There's so much happening in DeFi. I cannot keep up. Right. I want to make daily videos about it, and I probably will. But let's see. But the thing is that, like, okay, Terra, all that stuff, Terra, I don't know that stuff, but I, I will look into it. I'll link it in the show notes below that everybody can look into that. But, like, it's like in Ethereum, we're already miles ahead. There's a lot of problems that will happen if you do that at scale. If you say, let's have an AMM at scale, let's not have $9.3 million in fees, but let's get $50 million in fees on Bitcoin mm -hmm. that are related to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Let's get billions of dollars of trading volume on, I... uh, on, on, on Bitcoin, like Lightning channels and things like that, that have AMMs in it. What there will be mean? a lot of problems that will come that are not foreseen yet, and what that's fine. What do you think that's is? Just what do you think is? What do you think is? Just because I know how to like speak to a DJ, what do you think is eat killer? Sorry. What do you think is the eat killer? Ethereum killer. What I mean, is more scary to Ethereum I than anything else? I find that a nonsensical question because I'm a decentralized maximalist. Like uh, for me, it doesn't matter if something kills ETH or not. I just want to use the most efficient rails to build my DeFi protocols and primitives. Oh, so, so, that's I my mean, opinion. I feel like but, um, something when I that talk kills to someone DeFi, like you, yeah. or Eric Wolf, for example, who actually like, hey, we're really excited for like drive chain. Like here's yeah. a drive chain that actually, like you said right now, like it's experimenting, it's doing new things, iteration yes. every single day. What do you think? Like, why do you think that is the winner and not, for example, just be, just to laugh, just for a laugh, liquid. Well, I mean, liquid. It's I don't like liquid because I think it's right? a centralized okay. show with backed by by AXA, and I think it's very dangerous to trust. Sure. I don't want to trust so, anybody, right? So, I want to have a trusted, verifiable. So base liquid layer. is one extremely tight federation on Bitcoin. Yes, that can actually have. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And because that is that, and like you don't trust that, I'm okay with that. What do you think is gonna happen when like Bitcoin can have federations at no cost? Let's say that like here's a music for that federation, here's a music for federation. Because like, that is that like. not the eat killer? Like basically federations and federations on top of Bitcoin, where like this one has like this rule set, that one has that rule set. What but do they mean all federations? Feddy. Feddy is, for example, like it is a tool for Bitcoin to actually lock in Bitcoin uh, on a smart, a multi six smart contract mm. to form a federation that can actually have like different rule set and whatnot. Mm. That actually is like something that like is happening today on Bitcoin. Mm. And like, I feel like that's something that is heavily undercut because like I said before, like no, yeah, no there's shit a reason why we Bitcoin have this discussion is. because I feel a lot of people are very bearish on, on DeFi on Bitcoin. But that's why I, I hope they are. I hope they are. Like, hey, yeah, here's that's the why thing. I right? more. Here's the thing, right? Like, uh, I, I feel like DeFi as it is, which 
I feel I like we we you just call about these funny things and we're really honest. With this guy and and, and I want to like pick this up of like my uh, lightning finance kind of like pitch earlier before like the most open, collaborative and contribution friendly app store in That's the world. Subjective. The most open. I use it. Like it's not subjective. It is subjective. Everyone has used it. Android, Google Play is the most open, collaborative, contribution friendly. And other people would say something else. And it and does fine. And it is. Well, it is the worst financial rail. Like I think it actually like does not. It makes a quarter of like what iOS makes in a year in terms of like consumer spending or like apps and mobile games. Because like in terms of like what actually okay, matters, is relevant to this to a bit Ethereum and Bitcoin. And what all. actually matters in terms of like um, in terms of like financial services and whatnot is actually being lightning fast because like money moves towards the fastest like uh, payment rail. Uh, being premium like lightning already is, for example, like the the ability to actually create as many federations on Bitcoin as possible. That is primo. And the third thing is like the fact that like it takes its time in terms of like adding new features. But what is a federation? A federation is exactly like liquid, but like times a thousand. Ah, okay. Liquid so like is a, one like a federation. Side chain. A side chain. Yes, liquid is one federation. Yeah, but I don't like Fetty. federated model. This is horrible because you, you you don't trust. I don't trust these different. Like, like you need to have a trust spectrum. The base layer. If I you agree. want to talk about DeFi, the, De the base layer needs to do DeFi things. I agree. If I agree. your base layer doesn't DeFi things, then you can be money. That's why I think ETH is a better form of money than Bitcoin. Because I agree that on the base layer of ETH, you can do these things in a trustless way. I, on the base, it's I more agree. expensive. I agree that like, the same security market. I agree that a federation is not trustless. Yeah. Federation at the best that is created is trust minimized. And now here's the thing, right? Like well, basically. We were talking earlier about like how Ethereum transaction volume per day doesn't even match the stablecoin transaction per day on Ethereum anymore. It it sounds like it get dropped by half, for example. And that's a beautiful thing. It doesn't matter. It, it matters a shit ton. Matter. It matters a shit ton because like in terms of like in terms of like basically like what minor extractable value value is. Yeah. Like minor Maximum extract. Maximum. And it's just it's just minor extractable value. MEV. Yeah, maximum extractable. No, it's minor. No, 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 no. It's, it's not it's a VEV maximum extractable. Because MEV is basically seen in every economic system. It's just not really transparent because it's kind of difficult, right? Maximum extractable value is also in the stock exchange. Maximum extractable value could be in a lot of different things in the world. Um, it's just kind of like telling an e maxi that MEV stands for minor extractable value, but it does. MEV stands for minor extractable value. That's the definition. Thing. In terms, in terms of like. In terms of like, there's no more miners in ETH. That's why. It's so, maximum. in terms of like, basically, like why MEV matters on Ethereum, MEV doesn't matter on Bitcoin because like, basically, there's only one asset. MEV matters on Ethereum because like, yeah, because Bitcoin doesn't have DeFi. If Bitcoin will have DeFi, you will get maximum attractive value on Bitcoin, yeah. on your Lightning nodes. There I will know. be there will be sandwiches and everything. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay, MEV matters on Ethereum is because like, someone can fucking front run you. For all of your trade, why do they slip as is such a big deal? There already exist second class citizens on Ethereum today because mm. like they don't actually know what why node running matters, like why archival node matters. Like here's the thing, right? Like I mm. I want to make sure here that like there is a case to be made for DeFi, okay. and it can be made elsewhere. I'm not gonna say like everything has to be made on Bitcoin. It can be made elsewhere. Yeah. Let's make sure Ethereum is not the place to make it. Holy shit! It is so bad. It is. If only you know how bad it is. Well, enlightening. It can be made elsewhere. It well, doesn't I, have to be made. I, and that's that's the beauty. That's why we're sitting here, right? I could also take on my ease maxi am, hat, but I don't I like am, to do that because I want to stay open-minded. I am, and I want to learn about I Bitcoin. I want to learn about. Uh, even like other other chains, whatever. I don't I don't care. I, but I, I think am, Eve has the best economical uh, layer, best economical properties to build a decentralized finance network. That can be used and I, I'm right. not here to prove you wrong because like here's the thing. Like I've already like laid my cases to you many times why it is like the least like um, compromise. <sighs> I'm just gonna say it. Why lead, ETH doesn't even make it into my list. 
And I, I feel like I made my case very clear that like I'm not your typical Bitcoiner. I've actually like looked into like other technology. For example, like ZKP that we just said about like a blockchain technology. Blockchain is like one abstract data type. There is no such thing as a blockchain technology. ZKP is a cryptography technology. Yes. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. And the best cryptographers out there. Yeah. For some weird reason that you don't like, actually works with blockchain. You will, you will you not hear the end of this. But like, I don't care if you like blockstream or not, not like blockstream. Blockstream makes them. extremely competent cryptography papers. Sure, extremely sure. competent. I mean, that's again subjective. I mean, there will be different opinions on that, but that's fine. But the thing is, I don't trust them. I don't trust federated models. Don't trust. Verify. Blockstream makes extremely competent. Uh, sure. But if somebody I, makes a, an extremely, I mean, Sam Bankman Fried maybe wrote a paper one day that was pretty literally, good. Literally, Sam uh, Bankman Fried is the, the uh, model for like don't trust verify because like exactly. Sam Bankman Fried paid media to actually love him. Yeah. So like, I'm just trying to tell you right now, this is one Bitcoiner to an eat maxi. I'm not an eat maxi. Woo! I'm not. A, we made some progress today, man. I know. I'm never said that I'm an eat maxi. You definitely said it in this video. No, I can't. I said I can put on my Eve Maxi hat. Uh, you've said it before. It's a hat that I have in the closet. You definitely said it. But before. I would, I would not call myself an Eve Maxi. I'm, I'm a, I'm a decentralized Maxi. So, so that's what I said. So I mean, and and I, I'm trying to like make you sh make sure you reconsider why Bitcoin is designed the way it is. For example, like and and, and because you are software engineers. That you understand why zeros and ones exist. You understand that, like, basically, like, mm. anything outside of limitation, outside of scope, doesn't happen just because we wish really hard it happens. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of things like that out there in DeFi. There's a lot of things people like selling like shit tokens that actually just yeah. like, for example, like Luna, that is just like decentralized. We agree on that. Dino, right? Now we agree on that. Decentralized Luna. in name only. Yes. Now, um, well, you're, you're not you're not there with me yet. You're not there with me yet. That basically say like. Well, we're not perfectionists. We still want something that works today. Yes. Now, I feel like if you were to take a much deeper dive than you did before onto like why you were Bitcoin maximalist before, there are clear economic reasons. There are clear inflection point reasons why we don't actually want tokens on the base layer. Yeah, I mean, no, no, that's that's something that can be said. Okay, okay, okay. Like basically, like you might not like Samsung model for like this or that, whatnot, but like there is a clear reason why Bitcoin is called tokens hamta because like you are literally joining a different liquidity network on top of this network that doesn't need to be there because it's not decentralized. It is like ruled by the few of like uh, token issuance. Mm -hmm. That's the point. I feel like you're right. We want something that works today, but like there are certain things we don't want. And I'm trying to find that out. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to find something that works today. I'm trying to start find something that like, why don't we want Luna? Why don't we want UST or something like UST? Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like- I mean, the thing I is, I do like Frax. Frax is basically, a, it's also a fractional reserve like algorithmic stablecoin, which yeah. I like a lot. I like the design of Frax a lot. Sure. I like the people that are working on it. I'll look into it. it. I'll look into a curve stable coin like uh, the CRV as well. USD as well. And a CRV USD is still kind of theoretical, but I really like yeah. the CRV USD model. And I think like Aave will have its own stable coin. Uniswap can have its own stable coin. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of the thing is that the exact path that this technology will take and the exact path that DeFi as a as we set the definition in the beginning, decentralized finance is a decentralized financial non-political peer-to-peer -peer layer that every person what does finance without, solve for them like layers person should be able to dive into and go back to the base layer and do peer-to-peer -peer transaction and see all the transactions how it's built up I, but but like I, 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 go back, I go back to that right that is decentralized finance i go back to and that that's what we will have in the future i go back i go that's back, what i want to work for i go back to the point of like if i want to be a contributor to finance as in like i want to like put my money down for like some cost mm. i need to understand because like finance is not the guy it's not for the guy behind the dashboard finance is for the for the productive class that actually makes shit 
like this is why like I keep going back to this because I like, feel like DeFi don't has be, been geared. Okay, okay. But well, that's a more theoretical discussion. I first want to build the technology. I want to build something that works, and then the next step is getting more adoption. I think DeFi, we're at need for now at the stage that it works. DeFi, we have DeFi that works. Need, now we need DeFi to, that I see uh, junk bond token models that are designed for the people putting their money down to get more of it out. So it is an extractable model. I need, I need another beer. I'm gonna open another beer here. I, I, I just, please do. Cheers. Uh, we're going in circles. But I think, you know, we're in the hour and I, I think we have a, you know, a great discussion with DeFi. And I think the beauty of this is that we, 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 we see now is that, you know, it, like, it's an, it's a, it's a, we're dealing with a couple of unsolvable problems. But we're problems. not disagreeing. We're agreeing on a lot of things. We're agreeing on the definition of DeFi. We agreed on that in the beginning. Then, you know, we we both want to have a decentralized layer where mm -hmm. we can do our finances because I want. Why? Because we're entering into a world where we can digit, where we get central bank digital currencies, which is basically government money. We will get corporations' money from Facebook or uh, Lazada or whatever. They will have their own like coins and tokens. And we will get money for the people, which is Bitcoin, ETH, and other like decentralized networks that will have value so, in a decentralized way that we can communi communicate to each other. And people need to wake the fuck up and understand that the current banking system is a fucking scam and that we need to find different ways to I, get down to each other. I don't agree with that. And like, this is like, uh, maybe, can I just leave the question that I asked you earlier? Mm -hmm. Like, I asked my friend here, Deal before, like basically, like, do you think Bitcoin DeFi. is <laughs> revolutionary or evolutionary? Because, like, I don't mm. work off the assumption that, like, the people in charge are much better or much worse people than I am. I feel like the incentive model is fucked up. We need to remove humans are broken, humans are a broken species. We cannot deal with money, we're too greedy. We're greedy. Yeah. Sure. We need to create systems that are like kind of like ruled by mathematics that are governing our monetary energy. And I, I think that's the only way how we get there. And that's why I would say Bitcoin is a evolution or DeFi or crypto or ETH is a evolution because it's an inevitable thing that we're going to evolve into. It's just inevitable. It's going to happen for sure. I like the enthusiasm, um, but like I do not actually work in abstractive terms. For example, like I don't actually see it as an uh, evolution at all because when I take a look under the hood, mm. I see it as a devolution. Now, again, I don't work in abstractive terms. I don't work in press releases. I don't work in we all that stuff. Disagree on that and because I think proof of stake is a much better implementation of a decentralized blockchain layer and proof of work. There's a reason that all new like blockchains, they all use proof of stake models. Yeah, Self-referential credit model. Okay. Just like Fiat. I mean even self lightning referential credit but model, just like Fiat. How would you describe lightning something called lightning? Is that building proof of uh, a proof of work layer or a proof of stake layer? No, or what lightning is, that? The is definitely or? an off-chain escrow that yes. is undebasable. There is no paper Bitcoin on Lightning. No, but there is. There is a. Uh, you get fees if you run your Lightning. Or yes. You get fees, right? Yes, for work, for routing. Okay. For then a service that you I do, like commerce. A, I have my Ethereum. I have Ethereum nodes. Uh huh. Then I route transactions as well. Like, sure. how do you? Sure. I mean, like, if you want to say it like that, then it's fine. But it's like a self-referential, almost so like a multi-level marketing kind so of network. So lining is a multi-level, multi-level marketing self-referential model. That's there's no paper saying. Bitcoin, though. Like, there is no. I mean, there's no paper ETH. There's a lot of state ETH that, yeah. like, basically you artificially remove from the it's from the financial rail. Yeah, it's gonna be released next year. Do you decide that? It's mathematically in codes, and you can see no, what happens. Just recently added, by the way. Mika literally just literally added like the unstaking mechanism of like E2. 
Yeah, but that's that's in the plan. That's like the consensus with all the developers and all. You the literally just said that like humans are greedy, but you trust these humans. No, I don't trust humans. But because I trust, it's in the plan. Uh, it's in their plan. It's not. Their by the way, plan. Beacon it's Chain launch is delayed by years, and now this plan, you think they'll do it on time? Yeah, they're not gonna do it on time. But the thing, the thing is, the I, thing is, it's it's a I consensus. It. I it's a consensus. It. It's a consensus of like people coming together. We should end. Making plans. We should end DeFi Bitcoin because yes. like I feel like <laughs> we're done. Never ending we'll discussions. Talk. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk. All right. So thank you very much, Seth. It was like amazing of. Uh, having you on the show. This is an amazing discussion and I really think it's important uh, for us to keep questioning and evolving together. Mm -hmm. And I hope to see more Bitcoiners and uh, people from other like communities just sitting together and discussing the importance of decentralized finance and the importance of self-sovereignty and the importance of a way to keep our freedom. And I think that's what we're all fighting for. And how we get there, we will see. But let's fight for freedom. Cheers. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, all links to Seb's uh, Twitter or uh, his Telegram channel or uh, his work can be found in the description below. I am and, uh, ruthless about this. So, like, yeah. don't expect nicety. It's not a nice person. Okay. <laughs> no, you're a very nice person. I enjoy my talk and talk, we talk to each other soon. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.